Wow. Wow. That was an L. That was embarrassing. This Arsenal team, this Arsenal team from this season under Arteta, that's been losing games left, right and centre. That's part in the bottom half, very comfortably in the bottom half of the table. They beat us 3-1 today. <laughs> oh my God, honestly. like You have to understand how bad a team has to be on the day to play worse in this Arsenal team, to suffer a defeat in this manner. Now, you guys know that I like to keep things cerebral. I'm someone in my life, I care about the why behind things. You know, we lost, why did we lose like this? What was the reasons behind X, Y, Z? You know what I mean? That's how I like to do things. But for the match for today, I need to get a little bit of a rant out of the way first before, you know, I keep things cerebral at the end, but I'm going to just discuss and try to investigate what's happened to our form recently. Why did we lose the game in this type of manner? And of course, you guys feel free to comment too. Let's try and find some solutions together. I'm, I'll probably leave some of the best answers in the next video too. So make sure you guys comment below, man. But before I get into anything, I need to get one plug out of the way first. Today's video is brought to you by OneFootball and they have a special announcement to make. Right now, there's a prize giveaway where you have the opportunity to win a football kit of your choice. Now to enter, it's extremely easy. In the description, you'll find the link, click on that link, it will take you straight to a landing page. Once you get to the page, you follow the on-screen information. And as you guys can see, you must use One Football to participate in this competition. And if you have it already, that is absolutely perfect. And if you don't, there is a link in the landing page to click on, download the app, copy the first headline you see, come back to the landing page, fill out the information, and of course, enter your five match predictions. So you guys, this is a great opportunity to win something good here. You'll find all the relevant information in the description below. Now, getting back to things and, you know, I want to get a little bit of my rants out of the way first. Now, one criticism I had of Lampard from last season was his use of overexciting players. Now, I wasn't happy with how I used Kante during the season. I felt like Lampard consistently forcing Kante back way too early played one of the biggest reasons as to why Kante was not fully fit last season. See the difference this season where you can fully rely upon him consistently, the levels he's brought to the midfield, we missed out on this last season due to poor management. Now, today, massive surprises because we saw Reese James and Ben Chilwell making their returns back to the team. Now, we all thought that they meet now we all thought that they might need a bit more time to come back, but this was not the case and when you look at their performances today, I got the impression that they put some effort in, but their quality, of course, was nowhere near the same because they just returned back from injury. And, you know, when you're playing a game with two of your leading fullbacks not fully, fully fit, then you must expect that the quality from these guys at times ain't going to be consistently great. At the same time, though, it's obvious that Lampard just doesn't prefer anyone else other than Ben Chilwell and Reese. Because we see more game time given to Aspie, Emerson and Marcus Alonso, which is not the case. So does this mean that we have to go back into the market? Who knows? But, you know, I feel like that is one thing that can't be done anymore. Imagine if Reese wasn't playing today. Yes, I know why he has to play. And we can't forget that with Lampard. But some of the criticism, we have to understand why Lampard is doing things to begin with. With Reese James this season, he's been one of the best creative players for us. So whenever you can't use him, you're going to feel that loss. I get it. I completely get it. But sometimes, you know, sometimes I feel you've got to sacrifice a certain game to have these guys come back to their best optimum fitness. But that's one of my rants. Over a second run I have too is the lack of imagination we show at times. Wow. I feel like this is one area where we really have to work hard on this to go to the next level and to become a better football team. And what am I talking about in particular? I'm talking about those moments where we've got Reese or Winger down the flanks. We've got five, six players inside the opposition box just standing there. And then all we're doing from the left or the right is putting in crosses, hoping and praying that someone gets on the end of it. And when you're creating chances like this from open play, not set pieces, from open play, you know, how likely are you to get goals? And I feel like we keep seeing this too much where instead, these guys need to be making late arrivals inside the books. It's about, you know, exploiting the defensive line. Exploiting the opposition defensive line, I mean, and creating some space there for yourself. All the best teams do that. You look at a Liverpool team, you see how their players are arriving into the books. They ain't standing there waiting for some, you know, amazing ball from the heavens to just open up 
all the space and just, you know, perfectly land on someone's head for it to go in the back of the net. And even when we get those opportunities, as we saw in this game, they still don't go in the net. So I feel like we need to have greater imagination. At the same time, the, realistically, we have injuries. So when things aren't working like that, we need to have a plan B when it comes to playing. I really think they're my two main criticisms. I want to see improvements in those areas. And now I want to spend the rest of the time just investigating what the hell happened in this game. Now, for me, Arsenal's win was definitely luck. And for an Arsenal team to score three goals in their current form, they ain't doing that by, be, by playing excellently. Because I thought Arsenal, even though they won, they weren't like phenomenal. Let's keep things real. They won today because we were worse than them. Our intensity levels were not the same. Our imagination, you know, some of the build-up play, lack of cohesiveness, no one was playing with each other. Lots of selfish play in the final third. And when you're not playing like a team, what are you expecting? You're going to get embarrassed. So this is a, a big learning lesson for a lot of these young men. And I really feel like <laughs> these young guys are really learning things the hard way right now from interviews not too long ago with Ben saying that we feel unbeatable and we can beat anyone. It feels like reality has quickly got back into people's heads and now it's time to see a proper reaction. It, it really is because you can't get any lower than losing 3-1 to this Arsenal team. I'm sorry because this Arsenal team ain't even a top six quality team, man. This is what I'm saying. Like, it's not good enough at all. But now to continue on, I do feel that there were some small positives in the game. Lampard, of course, the second half subs, bringing on Hudson Adoy. Massive, massive boost in quality because he fits playing down the wing more than a team of Werner. And, and for me, I have to give more time to see how Werner works down the left hand side. In theory, I understand how he's supposed to be used exactly. And I was seeing those things when we had the other right pieces of that puzzle in the team. When we had Kai and Ziyech in midfield. You all understand how sick those guys were for a short amount of time playing together. The, the one-touch play, the interchange down the sides, Ziyech being able to move in field, kind of into the right. It was working and I do feel like, hopefully, if we can get back to just having a fully fit team again, I think we'll get back to winning again. But it's about how do we manage in this current situation when you don't have all your prized assets on fire or even part of the team that's what football is really about because most managers never get the opportunity to play with the full strength team consistently it's not that type of sport so what can we do i think one is have patience i think that we sign guys like kai and Werner for a reason they're not flops they're not going to get worse and worse they're going to come back they're going to get used to the league they are going to be better stronger players for this experience so for me this ain't an opportunity to scapegoat players and drag them down but at the same time at the same time sometimes i do feel like lampards can kind of force something for a bit too long you know when we saw pure sick hudson and and tammy abraham that was the front three that was the front three that worked and was it any surprise that for that consolation goal they all combined to link up to create that you know Tammy Abraham is not as bad as many people think here because they just, you know, only f focus on the aesthetics and they don't see the substance behind what Tammy does. That's a massive L on whoever thinks that. Uh, but you can see when you have more naturally gifted players playing wide because in the Premier League, playing wide is completely different to, uh, you know, playing in Germany where you have space in those flanks because, you know, teams aren't marking those areas or even playing down there like that. It's different. So I mentioned that point because Werner will be a better player for learning how to cope playing wide because he has to. Because I do think long term, he is our son. He is our Salah. He is that Ronaldo type of striker. But of course, you know, he needs to improve on his technical play. I really hope after today, all the players are absolutely livid. I hope they're getting into arguments with each other. I hope that they're pointing fingers at each other too because... When you're a team like us losing in this manner, so one of the worst teams this season, I'm sorry, there has to be a reaction because people need to show that they care. They care about the standards that we maintain at this club. It's that simple for me, but guys. So in that sense, that could be something in favour for why we had to sympathise behind the performance, but I don't know. I don't feel like this was a bad performance, but I don't feel like this was a great one. So for me, this is just an interesting one, but... 
You know, if anything, it does show the areas where Pulisic can still improve, still grow. I think sometimes he can force the player a bit, be a bit too one-dimensional. And with a guy with his skill set and his quality, I feel like he can better utilise his skill and technique. But I think that will come with age. What ain't helping the guy is having injuries left, right and centre. That's the reality. I mean, if you're playing a season consistently, the quality is going to be different compared to start and stop, start and stop due to this muscle injury and that one. So, you know, it was more of an observation for me. But again, uh, maybe kind of reflective of this entire game. But um, anyways, to continue on with another player that I do want to mention briefly. And, you know, I'm not even here to be sticking on him. I felt like I've given my opinion on Jorginho enough. I don't have to say too much. But, you know, that penalty miss in a crucial time where if we made it 3-2, the entire game is different with this Arsenal team, which has lived off fear this entire season, uh, they'd have a lot to answer to in those final five minutes. But uh, we missed the decisive penalty to change the complexion of the game. And that came from Jorginho. And the disappointing thing is that a lot of us felt like a miss was bound to come. Um, it's quite obvious that his spell here is ending quite sad um i can imagine when you're a player and when you know that the manager doesn't need you for the system you feel unwanted how are you going to play your best best football i respect and understand that i do but if anything this is uh, a fault with the boards when the manager needs players gone and you want to haggle over an extra five ten million this is what you get so uh it was disappointing and for me when i mentioned that point earlier about not being proper contenders this season it was this moment in particular that had, that absolutely summed it up for me because if you can't make it 3-2 in a time like this get back into the game you know how are you going to do that deep into the season in must win games i mean that's how i see it you guys big teams they obviously finish that but anyway you guys that's going to be me for today please like comment and subscribe i'm the efc this is blue lions tv i'll catch you guys later with some more videos